Hi, everybody. This is Tamara from Moogly, and we are live. Um, happy, what is it, May 10th. Um, hope your May is off to a good start. Um, I was just live over on Facebook talking about the latest Moogly news, and now I am live here on YouTube so that I can talk about a pattern. Basically, it all started with these. These were the crochet cord nesting bowls. Um, this is only two of them. I have pressed some of them into use, but basically a pretty simple idea, crocheting over cord um, with yarn to create a bowl of really any size. Then I made a square one, the napkin holder box, which is upstairs on my dining room table holding my napkins. So we had circles, we had squares, and I talked about in the squares how you can make, like, make that any size, not just for napkins. Led to a reader request. What about rectangles? So Today, I am going to go ahead and show the basic formula for how to make a rectangle cord box or basket, whatever you want to call it, um, in any size. Now, the finishing for it is exactly the same as for the bowls and the box, and I already have full full video tutorials pre-recorded right and left-handed for those up on my channel. So I'm hoping that today we can just do a quick live version of the rectangle variation, and then you guys can take it from there and finish it off however you like or the same way that I finished off the circles and the squares. Like I say, same technique, we're just making rectangles now, so it's a different shape. So since we are live, I want to make sure that I can see any questions or comments you might have. So let me just refresh my laptop real quick here. I know people like to get right to the point, but when we're live, we like to take advantage of that so I can see your comments and questions. Hi, Angela, Amir, and Elaine. Thank you so much for joining us today. Okay, so we are definitely live. I know that now. <laughs> and We are broadcasting, so let's go ahead and get started. Um, if you go to the link in the description, or moogalyblog.com. Um, I believe it's rectangle uh, rectangle cord basket. Let me make sure I get that URL exactly right. Crochet rectangle cord basket. Um, again, the link is also in the description here on YouTube, um, and I will be embedding this on my blog. But if you want the written pattern for this, the written formula or recipe, if you will, it is at that URL. And uh, as I say, linked in the description. And written instructions are uh, included with this video. So. What do we need? Let's go ahead and switch the overhead camera and we'll talk about what we're using today. For this pattern, Bernat Macrame is the cord that I crochet over. I've got some white already open here I'll be using, but it comes in a lot of really gorgeous colors. You can see here, you can have a lot of fun mixing it up. Like the one I've made, I used white cord and green yarn. You could use green cord and white yarn, or obviously whatever colors you like best. Um, Bernat Handicrafter is a great one to use with this. Or you could use Lily Sugar and Cream. I like to stick with cotton, but whatever yarn you want to use, it's a bowl, it's a basket, it's a you know a box. If you're not filling it with hot things, you can really use whatever kind of yarn you like. Of course, we need a hook. For this one, I like to use a USH 5mm crochet hook. This one's by Susan Bates. And since we're working in joined rounds, even though it's a rectangle, we're working in the round, I always like to recommend having a couple of stitch markers handy. Um, when you mark the first and last stitch of each row, it just helps um, avoid working into the slip knot or the slip stitch rather, which can be a really, really common mistake that we make when we're working in the round. It's just, you know, you don't have to go back and count your stitches every time to make sure you haven't accidentally worked into that slip knot. So as you can see here, we've got our rectangle backs. Um, it's not that, I mean, it's special yarn in that it's, you know, Bernat Macrame and Bernat Handicrafter, but you can, as I say, you want something thick to crochet over like a cord. Some people like to use um, clothesline um, or other cords that are out there, but Bernat Macrame is a great choice. Um, a lot of fun to crochet with on its own as well. And then I'm using Bernat Handicrafter um, or Lily Sugar and Cream, whatever you want to really. You could use Red Art Super Saver. That would be a fun one. Um, you could use some ombres, get some really cool color effects going. Uh, this would be a great project for variegated yarn, which can be difficult to use. So whatever you like to use is absolutely fine. Um, right here, like I say, we can take a look at the finished one. It starts out with a rectangle at the bottom, and then we just start working right around the sides. Same basic recipe that we used for the circle and the square. Just need to make a few small changes um, to turn it into a rectangle. And this rectangle shape can be as big as you like. You can see here I've made a rather small one, but that rectangle could get quite large. Just keep going in the rounds, and then when you want to make the sides, you can keep going up the sides as long as you'd like. So you could make something really big and tall, store, you know, like a big blanket basket for your living room or something like that. You would just, of course, need more yarn and then you can keep going. So let's go ahead. I'm going to go ahead and cut our yarn here today. I went ahead and left it attached to this one. 
But when you go to finish it off, I do have instructions on how to finish off these yarns in um, the video tutorials for the round and the square baskets. I just didn't want to um, spend all that time on this today since we've already done that on video. Today is just going to be how to turn it into a rectangle. I do need to grab one more supply. Which is tape. I had forgotten to grab it. I had to lean way over. We do want to, whenever we cut Burnett macrame, add just a little bit of tape to the end here. You can see it wants to unravel, which is great for ma macrame projects and knotted things and tassels and all sorts of stuff, but not for our basket here. So this is just a little bit of scotch tape or whatever clear tape you happen to have. And I'm basically going to just wrap the end of that yarn so it's nice and secure. And now it won't come won't come unraveled until we are ready to cut that part off. So let me just set that tape aside again here and get ourselves arranged. I'm going to pull up some of the green yarn here. We want to start with the knot cord yarn, the yarn that you are actually crocheting over your cord with. And then we want to leave a long tail because we're going to use that tail, if you watch the other videos, to tack down the end of the cord on the inside of the basket. So come in about 12 inches or so, and then you can go ahead and make your slip knot. There we are. And as you can tell by this small uh, hook, this is the only yarn we'll actually be crocheting with. We're just going to be crocheting over the cord. So to begin, we want to basically chain to the desired starting width of your basket. So right now, I'm gonna grab our little sample here again. The length of your chain will determine the width of that first row. And it can be any number at all. It doesn't have to be an even number. It doesn't have to be an odd number. Whatever size you want, you know, if you want a long skinny basket, if you want more of a square basket, <laughs> I know we're making rectangles, but if you didn't want it to be long and skinny, you'd want a shorter chain. If you wanted a longer, thinner basket, you'd want a longer chain. So let's go ahead and just start with five or six, maybe seven here, till we've got enough to make a little bit of a rectangle there. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven chains made. Again, the number is totally up to you. Then what we're going to do is skip the chain closest to the hook and single crochet in each remaining chain across. But we want to enclose that cord. So first things, I'm just going to go ahead, since we're single crocheting, I'm going to insert my hook in that second chain from my hook. We want to skip the one chase closest to the hook, go to the second one, just going to insert my hook right there and then I'm going to pull up my cord. Basically, just going to lay the cord right over my hook. And you can see I've left a few inches there, some to work with when it comes time to weave in ends and whatnot. But we just want to lay that cord right over our hook. Then, when we pull our yarn up through that stitch and make our single crochet, it's now trapped inside that stitch. Okay, there we are. So it's just trapped right inside the stitch. So when we go to the next stitch, we work into the next stitch of our yarn, the next chain there. But again, make sure that the cord is laying over our hook when we yarn over and pull that yarn up and through, and that will continue to trap it. Now, if I pulled on it real hard, I could pull it back and forth through those stitches. So we need to be aware of that as we're working. We just wanna make sure that it's laying nicely on top and that we're not pulling real hard on it or leaving too much slack in it either. We just want it to lay sort of straight on top of our stitches. Sometimes I'll even give it just a little bit of a tug like that. So now we're just working down our chain. Good morning, everybody. Thanks for joining us. If you're watching live, <laughs> which right now you are, but later, that'll be different. There we go. Okay, so we have single crocheted in each of those chains, just working right over the cord. Like I say, we're not crocheting into that cord at all. Right now it is still basically loose inside those stitches. As we keep working, it'll get more and more tacked down, but if you needed to adjust it at this point, you absolutely could. Now we're not done though with this row. So what we're going to do is go ahead and chain two. It's gonna be our first corner. And then we're going to single crochet right back in that last stitch one more time. So right back where we made that previous one. We still want to work over the cord. Make sure too that the cord isn't getting pushed to the back of your stitches. We want it to be sort of right on on top right there. 
then we chain two again, make our second corner, and now we're going to crochet in the bottom of that foundation chain. So really, we're going back into that stitch one more time, but we want to kind of turn our work so that now we're across the bottom. You can see I'm just giving that cord a little bit of a tug to make sure that it doesn't become up, come up and be real loose right there in the corner. We just want it to be nice and smooth as it makes that turn. Then we just go into each one of those foundation stitches. Same thing. We want to work right on over that cord. And you can work over your tail end here if you want to, too. I actually like to work over the tail end for this one. Not the whole time. I still want to weave it in. But this will put it back at that same side as this cord, which makes it easier when it's time to finish. If you don't do it, of course, you can just use your yarn needle to weave in that end and get it over to where you want it to be. There, see, um, someone came in and said, what kind of yarn is the cord? It is Bernat Macrame. Lots of glorious colors, as you can see. Not just, not just your standard white, which is really neat. All right, so we have worked with this one now. We have worked all the way across our foundation chain. You can see right there. So we've got worked into our chain, chain two, worked in that last stitch again, chain two, work across the foundation chain. Time to chain two again. Go right back into the bottom of that first stitch. And then chain one. And we're going to single crochet in the last stitch of the round. The reason we do it this way is because we want our hook to end up in the middle of this, what we're going to treat as a chain two space, as our final corner. So we go right into that last one and single crochet right in there. Alrighty. So it's kind of hard to see, but that little chain one and single crochet right there, we're going to count that as if they were a chain two that joined with a slip stitch right there. So then for round two and for as many rounds as we want to use to make the bottom of the basket, these are the rounds that determine the size of the basket itself, or at least the size of the bottom of the basket. We continue to enclose these, growing it out basically the same way we grow any standard rectangle or squares. Um, if you've worked in the round before or you're making a rectangle, it's kind of the same thing. We're just making sure to keep enclosing that for nat macrame. So to begin round one, we would chain one. We want to single crochet right back in that chain two space. Remember, we're counting that as our chain two. So basically, go right underneath that uh, single crochet right there. And go ahead and single crochet in that. And then we want to single crochet in each one of these single crochets. Make sure we go right back to enclosing that cord. So if you enclose the cord when you make that single crochet to join, you wouldn't enclose it in that first stitch for round two. But if you don't, then you'll want to make sure to pull that up there. You can really do it either way. I've played with it both ways, and I can't quite decide which one I like the look of best. So I recommend that you play with it and see which one you like best. But here we are in round two, and you can see how each row is simply going to just grow out from there. We single crochet across into each stitch. When we come to a corner chain two there, go right into that chain two, single crochet, chain two again. Can't enclose the cord in the chain twos, of course. But then right back down in that chain two space and close the cord again. Now we've got the one stitch there that we put on the side, so we want to make sure we work in there. That takes us to our next chain two corner. We go right in there. Make sure when you go into those chain twos, you know that you're not picking up the the cord from below, we just want to work into that chain two space, chain two again for this corner, right back in that chain two space and around the cord again. There we are. So you can see what that looks like. And then we just continue to work right down the other side. So with this technique, you can just build the bottom of that bowl or basket or whatever you want to call it out to be whatever size you like. We'll finish up round two here and then I'll show you how I start building the sides. So I'm so glad you guys like it. Um, some M560 says she inherited some macrame-esque cord from her grandma. I didn't know what to do with it. Yes, this would be a great project for any cord or rope or even just really thick yarn that you've got laying around that you can't come up with a project for. You can crochet right over it like this. 
it kind of reminds me of those sewn baskets you see people do with the cords of fabric. Sort of a similar-ish look for crocheters. We're back at a corner. So we did single crochet, chain two, and single crochet back in that corner. Got our final side here. And then that brings us right back to that very first corner we did right there. We want to single crochet in there, and then chain one, and then single crochet in that first stitch we made for this round. So this is where having a stitch marker to mark out that stitch can be really helpful. We're just gonna go right in there. And like I said, you can work over the cord when you do the single crochet join, or you can go ahead and drop it. We worked over it for the last one. Let's go ahead and drop it for this one so you can see how that looks a little different. I single crocheted in there. So now to begin round three, I would chain one and go under, kind of in that space right there, pull it open so you can see, and then pull the cord up and over and start crocheting over it for that round. So you can do it either way. Um, like I say, I, I go back and forth on which way I prefer, um, but both of them are totally valid. Now, when you go to make the sides, that's where the stitch markers really come in handy because we will be joining with a slip stitch. With this one, it's a little bit easier to see, but it starts the same. We chain one and single crochet right into that space. Then we are going to work a single crochet in the back loop only of each stitch till we get to that next corner. So we want to find that first single crochet right there and we just go into the back loop only. So we look at that top V, put our hook right in the middle and go just under that back loop. Now we are building up our sides, so it's okay at this point if you want to hold your cord kind of behind your stitches a little bit, because now we want to really push off in that direction. So you can sort of hold the cord behind your work a little bit as you work this round, whatever round it is when you've decided the base of your basket or box is big enough and you're ready to start building up your sides. You can do one little side for a really shallow tray. You could keep going till you run out of yarn, make something really tall, tall and skinny, short and wide, whatever you like with this formula. Let's see. Um, let's see. Where did I get the yarn? Yarnspirations.com. Um, Chris asks, I'm making a basket with two strands of sugar and cream held together um, and it's killing your hands. Yeah, this it isn't as stiff, I don't think, because really we're still just working with one strand of yarn and the appropriate size hook for it. Um, but definitely hand fatigue can be an issue with any project. And when you're sort of juggling multiple things that can be really tiring on the hands. So like any any project I recommend if your hands are getting tired, go ahead and take a break. Give yourself a rest. So now you can see here, I've just worked in that back loop only and that gives a really nice sort of flat edge there to our basket. It's optional. You don't have to work in the back loop only. If you prefer to work under both loops, you'll get a sort of a more rounded bottom to your basket. But again, whatever you prefer. Now, when we come to this next chain two corner, since we're making our sides, we wanna handle it just a little bit differently. We're just gonna do two single crochets right in that chain two space. Still wanna work over the cord. There's one and two, like so. But now we're just going to be creating a solid line all the way around. Time to work in this side. We wanna go back to back loop only. Make sure we enclose the cord every stitch except for any chains, but we're not making chains anymore because now we're making the sides. So now I'm back at that chain two corner. So I just wanna go right in there for one and two. There we go. I need to pull up a little bit more cord and yarn here for my skeins. Let's see, and Elaine uh, says that these yarns are also available in Joanne. So that is great, great news. I don't get out to uh, shop in person as often as I'd like, so I tend to shop online quite a bit. Now I'm working in the back loops only again for this final side. You can see every once in a while, I just wanna give the cord a little bit of a tug to make sure it's not getting too loose inside the basket. If I pulled really hard, maybe I could pull it all the way out now, but at this point, I think it is pretty well lodged inside the basket. So I'm just gonna continue around here so we can finish off this row to see how the sides of our basket go. But like I say, you don't have to stop at one or two or three, you can keep going as tall as you'd like. We've got one more corner here. We'll put our two single crochets in there. Get all the little tails out of the way. 
with a little bit more yarn. And then we've got our final side. So I want to go back to back loop only. Don't forget that cord. Just a few stitches here on our tiny little basket. I like little ones like this for holding things like stitch markers or even my rings at my bedside table. I've got one in the kitchen when I want to take my rings off there. Um, they're just really handy little things to have around the house. So now I've worked all the way around here for our first row of the sides. We come back to that first corner we started in. Remember we started with one single crochet and we're putting two in each corner. So you just want to get in there and do that final one. And now you definitely want to enclose the cord in that one. So now, since we're just making, you know, solid rounds here, we don't need to worry about ending up in the middle of a chain space. We can go ahead and join with a slip stitch. So this is where I would definitely break out those stitch markers. Just one in that last stitch, one in the first stitch. And now when you make your slip stitch, you don't want to enclose the cord in the slip stitch. Kind of like our chains, that would be really difficult. <laughs> just want to go ahead and join that round together. Since we're not working into that slip stitch, we want a nice tight join there. So I'm going to go ahead and give that a real tug. And after that, it's back to you you're going under both loops. We just chain one and single crochet around, just like working in the round for any other project. We go right into that first stitch, make sure to pull the cord on up for this row and crochet right on over it. Now that's our new first stitch. So I'd move my stitch marker right on up like so. Get a little bit more yarn going here. And then we just continue to crochet right over the cord. We can go under both of those top loops now. We're not trying to make, you know, the bottom edge to our basket or anything. And you can see right now it still wants to be kind of flat. It's important, like I say, that every once in a while you give that, that macrame cord a little bit of a tug. That will help give you some shape to your basket as well. But kind of like when you're making a hat and you move from the circle, start making the sides. At first it doesn't look like a hat, it looks like a bowl. Keep making those sides, the taller the sides, the uh, you know, the more they should come in. And like I say too, you can also always give that cord a little bit of a tug and make sure that it's coming up there and that will help build up the sides as well. But it really is a really fun and versatile project. You can see now at the corners, we just don't even have to pay attention to corners. We're just crocheting right around. So let me get through most of this row here. There we are. So you can see just how that is going to keep building right on up the sides. So then when you've got your project the size you want, let me pull up the bowls here. It's kind of the same thing. And I, like I say, I demonstrate this in the video for the bowls um, and for the square box, but you would just use that long tail. Remember we left a long tail at the beginning there. You want to sort of cut this down to size and then use a little bit of glue. I recommend E6000. It's a really nice all purpose glue. Um, Aileen's Tacky Glue is another one that a lot of crafters have in their um, stash. That could be great for this as well. But you just want to glue that down and then use the yarn, the Lily Sugar and Cream, the Burnett Blanket, whatever it is, to sort of sew over and tack that down. You can see that up close on the bowl right there, how I did that. And working with glue on live camera is uh, tricky. <laughs> I tend to, tend to end up gluing myself to something. So we'll, uh, I'll send you to the recorded ones for that. But then when it comes to the very end, it's kind of the same thing. I would cut off the end of the macrame or the cord or rope, whatever you're crocheting over, and then just use that tail end of the yarn to sew over it a few times with a little bit of glue. Um, whatever glue you rec use, I do recommend making sure you get the clear one. Um, E6000, like I say, is a really popular one, but it also comes in black. And unless you're using black yarn and black cord, you want to make sure that it will dry clear. You can see how that looks here on the white on white one. There's the, the middle there. So you can sort of use a little extra glue if you want to, but this has been glued and it's not until you feel it that you can actually feel the glue on there. You have to really kind of get in there with your finger, but it's a great way to just finish it off. So now you can make circles, you can make squares and now rectangles as well. So I hope you guys enjoyed that. We can go ahead and switch back to the other camera. All right, well, good. I'm glad you guys like that. Thank you so much. Um, I've been great to hear all your comments. Once again, that was with Bernat Macrame um, and Bernat Handicrafter or Lily Sugar and Cream or really whatever yarn you want to crochet over. This yarn, uh, the Bernat Macrame comes in lots of colors. And of course we all know that the cotton yarns come in lots of colors as well. But 
if you're not using it with anything that needs to be needs to be hot or cotton, you could definitely use whatever yarn you want to to crochet over the cord. Um, like I say, variegated, self-striping. You could get some really neat effects depending on the yarns you choose. So kind of a wide open project. Make it in any size. Um, but I hope that this video trail helps you make your own. So thank you all so much for joining me today. Uh, please do go to the link in the description. Um, again, that is mooglyblog.com crochet rectangle cord basket. Um, and that will take you to the written pattern for this video, um, as well as all the other links to all the other cool stuff and giveaways that are happening on Moogly right now. So I hope you have a great day and I'll talk to you again soon. Bye everybody.